Lesson 3.7, multiply with 1 and 0. When we have one group of 5, we can write 1 times 5 is equal to 5. We have one group with 5 in the group. When we have five groups of 1, we can write 5 times 1 equals 5. Here we have five groups with 1 in each group. The identity property of multiplication states that the product of any number and 1 is that number. When we multiply a factor by 1, that factor will keep its identity. 2 times 1, it's still 2. 3 times 1, it's still 3. 4 times 1, it's still 4. 5 times 1, 6 times 1, 7 times 1, whatever the factor is, if it's multiplied by a 1, it keeps its identity. It is that number. It doesn't matter how big the number is or how small the number is. If it's multiplied by 1, it stays the same. Here we have three groups of 2. There's three groups. There's 2 in each group. That's 3 times 2 is equal to 6. If we take one counter from each group, we'll have three groups of 1. We'll have 3 times 1 is equal to 3. If we take one more counter from each group, we'll have three groups of 0. We have 0 counters. 3 times 0 is equal to 0. And the 0 property of multiplication states that the product of 0 and any number is 0. When we multiply a factor by 0, the product will be 0. 2 times 0 is equal to 0. 3 times 0, 4 times 0, it doesn't matter how big or small the number is. If we multiply it by 0, the answer, the product, will be 0. Tala has two stacks of cookies. And there are six cookies in each stack. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So Tala has 12 cookies in all. Suppose Tala eats all the cookies in one stack. How many cookies will she have? She'll have one stack of six. One times six is equal to six cookies. Then Tala ate the rest of the cookies. What fact shows how many stacks she has now? She started with two stacks of six. Now she has zero stacks of six. Zero times six is equal to zero cookies. That's the number of equal groups. That's how many it would be in each group. And the product is zero. We can use reasoning to complete the multiplication sentences. Something times one is equal to 10. Remember, when we multiply by one, it keeps its identity. When we multiply by zero, it will equal zero. So for this to be multiplied by 1 and have an answer, a product that's 10, that must be a 10. The identity property says if we multiply a factor by 1, that factor will keep its identity. So what do you think this one would be? 1 times 24. The 24 is being multiplied by 1, so it's going to keep its identity. It's going to be 24. 0 times 35 is equal to... Remember, the zero property of multiplication says when we multiply a factor by zero, the product will be zero. So as soon as we see that zero, we know the answer. The product is zero. So this next one should be easy. We're multiplying by a factor and zero. The answer must be zero. Something times seven is equal to seven. What can we multiply times 7 so that 7 would keep its identity? If you said 1, you're right. 0 times 0. Well, this factor is being multiplied by a 0. So the answer, the product, must be 0, according to the 0 property of multiplication. At a cycle shop, Emma saw 4 unicycles. How many wheels are on four unicycles all together? We see we have 
a frequency table showing cycle wheels, and that a unicycle has only one wheel, a bicycle has two wheels, and a tricycle has three wheels. If she saw four unicycles that each had one wheel, we would write four for the four unicycles here. They each have one wheel, so we would write a one here. And four times one is equal to four. The identity property of multiplication says when we multiply a factor by one, that factor will keep its identity. So the four will stay the same. Emma saw three cycles with eight wheels in all. If two of the cycles were tricycles, what type was the third cycle? Well, if the two were tricycles, that means the first one is a tricycle with three wheels. The second one is a tricycle with three wheels. That's two tricycles times three wheels each. That's six wheels in all. She saw eight wheels. Eight wheels minus these six wheels is equal to, to two wheels that are left. So the third cycle has to have two wheels it must be a bicycle with two wheels. We found out how many wheels were on the two that were tricycles, and we subtracted those wheels from how many she had in all, and that told us how many the third cycle must have had. It must have had two wheels, so it must have been a bicycle. So remember, when you multiply with one, It'll keep its identity and it, the factor will stay the same. When you multiply by zero, the product will be zero. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.